Welcome back, everybody. My name is Grace, or Gibby, whatever you prefer, and today I'm making a complete guide to the Chessmaster Saga. Now, the Chessmaster Saga is found on the travel map here, uh, sort of in the middle left of the first page, and as you can see, um, it has two sections. So it's got this first section that's quite old uh, that goes from 1 to 19, and then it's also got the finale, which is the Season of Consequences. Now this is new as of very recent events, and the saga just finished at Checkmate. So there are a total of 22 quests in this saga, which is quite significant, and they're broken up into two hubs. As well, there's also this bonus event, which is Season of Choices, that's just a relic of when the players were given in-game hub to vote on what the staff should work on developing uh, in terms of the story first. So that's not really relevant. You can just skip that if you're playing through. Now, this guide also comes with a Google Doc linked in the description. And the Google Doc uh, not only covers the items and the monsters that you can expect, but it also covers the lore, which is something I'm doing for the first time. I'm not really a lore gremlin. Uh, but I'm working to become one. So let me know what you think. Uh, and if you don't want any spoilers, just skip through the lore section and only look at the items. With that being said, let's get right into the questing. Quest 1. Lelogia gets iced. There are no notable monsters for this quest. It's nine battles long. And the rewards are the Ice Beast attack spell which is a simple 3-hit ice spell, which maxes out at level 126. Quest 2, War on Paxia. There are no notable monsters uh, in this quest, and there are nine battles again, and the rewards are the Sixth Wind, which is a 20 proc ranged wind spear with a plus three bonus to hit lean, which is max level 123, and the Tower Crusher, a 20 proc melee earth hammer with a minus five bonus to hit lean, and its max level is 127. Quest 3, Hope Reborn. There are no notable monsters in this quest, and the rewards are the Arctic Darren Blade, which is a 20 proc melee ice sword with a plus one bonus to hit lean, 
and max level is 125, and the supercharged Darren Staff, which is a 20 proc energy staff, energy magic staff, and its max level is 135. Quest 4, Element of Surprise. There are no notable monsters in this quest, and there are 13 battles to get through. The rewards are the Planet Splitter, which is a 10 proc melee earth axe with a minus 3 bonus to hit lean. Its max level is 125 for gold, but 142 for tokens. There's also the Cave Collapse spell, which is a simple 6 hit earth spell, and its max level is 128. Quest 5, Paxia Under Siege. There are no notable monsters, and there are 5 battles to complete the quest. The rewards are the Arctic Tempest, a 20 proc magic ice and wind compression staff. Its max level is 132, and there's also the Pyroclastic Pyrocrag, which is a 20 proc melee fire earth compression axe, and its max level is 134.
Quest 6, The Burning Sands. There are no notable monsters, and there are 11 battles to get through. The rewards are Heavy Water, a 20 proc water ranged spear with a minus 5 bonus to hit lean, and it maxes out at level 127, and the Fiery Orb Sword. It's a tokens 10 proc magic ice sword with a fire and ice damage special. Its max level is 132. Quest 7, Fiends Like These. There are no notable monsters, and there are 9 battles to get through. The rewards are the Guardian Perfected Grimstalker. It's a 100 proc ranged dark bow with a plus 10 bonus to hit lean, maxing out at level 120. Quest 8. Looking for leads. Cuckoo. There are no notable monsters. There are a varied number of battles, but a minimum of 7, based off a 120 luck roll, which is defiable. The rewards are the Coup Brush, a 20 proc melee brush that swaps elements randomly on each hit. It's useful for very select element blocking mechanics, and it maxes out at level 136. And there's also the Storm of Coups spell, a simple random element spell that hits with four random elements. It's useful, again, for very select element blocking mechanics, and its max level is 136.
Quest IX, an excellent adventure. There are no notable monsters, and the battles are varied, but minimum 5 based off two rules, 66 Charisma and 66 Luck. Both are defiable. The rewards are the Thunderbird costume, which is a neutral lean energy armor with a varied hit count from 1 to 3, and varied damage from 60% to 190%. Maxes out at level 138 and 41 energy resistance. The Thunder Chick is a simple energy pet, its max level is 138, and the Thunderbird Helm is an energy misc, which has 76 SP upkeep and reduces energy resistance by 10 and wind resistance by 7. Quest 10, Shock to the Heart. There are no notable monsters, and there are 9 battles, and the rewards are the Jolt Jumper War Bow, which is a 100 proc ranged energy bow with a plus 4 bonus to hit lean. It's notably one of few bows with just a singular hit, normal attack, and true special attack. Its max level is 137. As well, there's the Thunderstalker Guardian Strike which is a simple energy spell with 3 hits and a plus 4 bonus to hit lean, maxing out at level 137. Quest 11, Return to Paxia. There are no notable monsters, and you have to fight 10 battles. The rewards are the Luminous Worm Spear, a 20 proc ranged light spear that blinds the foe for minus 25 on special at a minus 20 save. It's max level 138, and the blind lasts one turn. There's the Luminous Worm Strike spell, which is a three hit light spell that randomly inflicts a weak blind or a weak daze. Its max level is 132, and there's the Luminous Worm Helm, a light misc that provides minus 9 resistance, or minus 10 for the token version, and gives a damage boost based off missing health, capping at 1.25x damage when you're almost dead. Max level 132.
Quest 12, Paxian Patrols. There are no notable monsters, and there are 15 battles. And the rewards are the Defender Leader's Shield, which is a simple earth shield with 24 earth resistance and 16 MRM. So it's a blocking heavy shield, and its max level is 140. There's also the Clan Defender's Memento, which is a simple earth misc that costs 53 SP per turn and reduces earth resistance by 10 and increases immobility resistance from any stuns by 5. Its max level is also 140. Quest 13, The Fallen Fisherman. There are no notable monsters, and there are seven battles. And the rewards are Jacques Fury, a simple earth and water dual element spell with two hits, and it maxes out at level 145. And the Colossal Shock Caller, an energy misc that has 53 SP upkeep, and reduces energy resistance by 10, and multiplies pet damage by 1.325.
Quest 14, Light in the Dark. There are no notable monsters. And the rewards are the Lumen Rain slash Radiant Rampage spell, which is a simple four hit light spell with an unbalanced damage and accuracy lean on the first hit. And it maxes out at level 147. There's also the Light Can pet, which is a simple light pet that deals increased damage to vampires by 10% with a 5% down trigger, unless you're a werewolf, in which case there's no down trigger. Also, I forgot to mention, but it takes 10 battles to complete the quest. Quest 15, Burning Questions. There are no notable monsters, and there are only two battles. The rewards are the Hacksaw, which is a 30 proc melee wind saw with a minus five bonus to hit lean. And its max level is 147. And there's Optic, a fire misc that provides 55 fire resistance and eight bonus to hit for 47 SP per turn. Its max level is 147. There's also the eighth detective title, this quest has some investigating mechanics. You simply first have to go to the town square, then go to the beat up looking house and inspect the wall with scratches and inspect the picture. Then go to where Fitz is, which is the uh, house closest to the jail. Then after interrogating him, you can go to the jail. If you forget all that, you can Google burning questions on the forums and you should find the correct solution.
Quest 16, an unexpected development. There are no notable monsters, and there are five battles to complete. The rewards are the mini Theta, which is a water pet that randomly does water or energy and does 1.2x damage to compensate, and the mini Zai, which is a standard wind pet with a rare, stronger attack. There are also several war and kill, several war kill reward titles. 16B is the season of choices. This is simply a relic of when the players voted in game on what lore event should be next focused on by the writers. It's mainly irrelevant to the direct story. It doesn't add anything, it just summarizes. Quest 17, Dark Tidings. There are notable monsters in the form of simple 20k dark monsters. So they have 20k HP, but they're 200% to light. Um, just be ready for that. There are nine battles. The rewards are the Evil Knight, which is a tokens fully offensive dark earth fire compression armor with a normal type skill that's locked to ranged or magic with 1.6 Ellie comp, and there's no info subs. The Darkness Hour Orb Shroud is a darkness spell that has 5 hits and it pays half its damage to inflict a 22 times dark resistance blind for 5 turns based on its accuracy. And it's at a minus 20 save. It also doesn't have any info subs. Finally, the Skelly Brain is a dark pet that toggles to pay half damage to inflict a 37 times dark resistance paralyze or have a chance, a 37 times dark resistance chance to inflict paralyze with a Charisma versus Endurance save.
Quest 18, A Cavernous Chronicle. The notable monsters are Terrapin, who has high HP and pretty low resistances, so harm damage is recommended. There are 14 battles to get through. The rewards are the Torrentacle spell, which is a water spell that pays about a third of its damage to try and paralyze the foe 100% of the time times water resistance, and it has three hits. Terrapin Shell is an earth spell that gives 25 MRM and a 0.5 earth Ellie shield for three turns. These both scale off end, so they're half as strong without any endurance. It costs 392 XP. SP. Bell Shell is an earth mist that gives 0.5 earth resistance and 13.5% lifesteal based off your damage dealt, which is halved for spells and skills. It costs 54 SP. Quest 19, Going Cuckoo. The notable monsters are the Koo Dragon. It swaps offensive and defensive elements randomly. It has 10,000 HP and hits pretty hard. However, it's easily stunned or nuked. And there are seven battles to get through. The rewards are the Arctic Athame, which is a 20 proc magic ice dagger that boosts ice spell damage by 18% and by 37% if the foe has intellect. It's extremely potent as a free-to-play spell booster. High Noon is a 100 proc, 20 proc for the true special, a uh, ranged earth gun that deals 10% more damage if the foe has strength, and the Draculich Devastator is a 20 proc melee light hammer that deals 5% increased damage to undead and 5% increased damage to dragons and double if they're both. There are no info subs for it. Also, there are several War Kill Locked titles.
quest 20 is the first quest in the Season of Consequences hub, and it's Attraction. The notable monsters are the Conduit, which is a boss that randomly swaps elements after each SP attack, and it also has Elemental Swapping Backlash, which you can read both of on, your st on its status page. Resistance Misks are very helpful to cover the opposite element, while your armor and shield cover one element. There are also nine battles in the quest. The rewards are the Fright Thorn Bow, which is a 100 proc ranged water bow with a 20 proc true special. It toggles to trade a fifth of weapon damage to inflict a minus 30% damage panic on the foe, dex versus charisma. The other reward is the Corrupted Confluence, which is a zero proc melee ice mace with a minus three bonus to hit lean. It has a toggle that makes it switch to a random element at the beginning of each turn and also drain 15% melee and mana to deal plus 15% damage.
Quest 21 is in the Season of Consequences hub, Pawn Race. There are notable battles, there are notable monsters because it's only one battle, and it's the Abyssal, Am Abyssal Ambush. It's a strong water and dark dual element monster with some notable effects. It is nukeable with multi-hit skills though. The rewards are the Stormlight Spear, which is a zero proc ranged energy spear that has a 5% chance of inflicting a minus 25 blind and a power 4.5 burn for 3 turns at a minus 20 save. You can also pay SP to have a 100% chance of inflicting a slightly weaker blind and burn, or either one and not the other. There are the Faithless Visage faces, Faithless Visage faces, and several War Kill Locked titles. Finally, the finale of the quest is Quest 22, Season of Consequences, Checkmate. The notable monsters are the Prime Conduit, which is a notably difficult boss fight, which is like a buffed up version of the fight in Attraction because it has some extra mechanics. Notably, it has significant lifesteal after its health reaches a certain point. The Challenge Gauntlet also has you fight all 8 beasts in pairs of 2 without healing. It can also be quite difficult if you don't come prepared. Chugging potions is a very valid strategy, and that's how I got through it on my unoptimized warrior setup. The rewards are the mighty and mystic Kaisa. The swords are zero proc melee and magic energy swords. They have a 5% chance to inflict a prismatic burn. They can also be clicked to toggle to deal harm damage for a slight HP cost 
and also pay 92 SP to inflict a Prismatic Burn for 4 turns. There's also the Chromatic Channeling spell, which is a buff spell that is not quick cast, that has both SP and MP versions. It gives 80 strength for 2 turns, and locks your attacks to a random element for 2 turns. Your random element attacks and will also inflict a Siphon Poison that heals you for 100% of the damage it deals. There are also several Warlocked titles. And that's all for the Chessmaster Saga. I'm hoping to make a video covering the lore in a sort of storytelling format in the near future. But for the moment, this is the complete guide. Uh, it should give you information on all the items and quests you could be interested in. Uh, feel free to check out the Google Doc in the description if you're interested in the lore or reading up on it yourself. Thanks for watching. Hope you appreciate the video and have a great day. Bye bye.